Hi everybody and welcome. Welcome to a new episode with a lot of fresh newly released vinyl and some jazzy reissues, fresh jazzy sounds. First one is by Rob Franken. Rob Franken is a Dutch pianist. Um, I was completely blown away by this record. Uh, it's kind of a lively album. It's new to the released. Uh, I don't actually know if it's ever been on vinyl. Probably as it was a uh, library record specific for advertisement. It was available, uh, but very limited. It's called Electrification uh, Trio 678. 678 is the record label. Um, they're all, he did quite a lot of albums. Um, they have reissued in one go six albums. Um, that is really testing my strength and my composure. Uh, but I have limited myself only to this one. This is volume 6. Uh, I don't know where they started. If it is 3, 4, 5, and then 6, 7, 8, or which 6 they picked. As you can hear, he was one of the first in Holland to play the roads. And this album is just filled with electric roads, electric bass, and some guitar and some drums. And it is just. You don't need more. One of the nice touches that they did was they included this paper stencil, which is really, I'm holding it upside down, done in the old fashioned way, typewriter, not really lined out perfectly. And it gives you an introduction, who is Rob Franken, what has he done? Uh, all compositions are of course from the 70s, halfway 70s I believe this record is. 72 to 74 or something um, but it's very nice touch I mean this is really like you're discovering the album for the first time and what is fun is that these kind of people they played in a lot of bands they I believe somewhere it is mentioned that he's played on more than 100 albums but it's only logical if you it's typical for those session players and they did in their same spare time they did some advertising, TV, films, and it's all this kind of music. So it is that relaxing, warm, 70s sound, beautiful. Next is a new release. Or actually, I think it's released in 2018, last year, by Tendalonius. He is the record owner of the label, 22A. I think you've seen that now. He did a new album. And if you listen to the previous album and this one, is there a difference? Yes, about 40 years difference. And the fun thing is when you, I don't know actually if it's like this or like this. I put it in like this in the sleeve, so I guess. It's with the 22 or uh, 22 orchestra, and these are the players. And it mentioned um, somewhere it's recorded in the Abbey Road Studios, just an eight hour jam session. Uh, and they, I think they took the best tracks because it's sounding very good. Somewhere it said it was a unique sound. Yeah, it's truly really unique with a completely natural and seamless quality about it. It's 70s jazz funk. Oh, maybe I'm exaggerating, but it sounds very good. But it is really that, that looseness, natural, little bit of sweetness in there. Very nice. And if we move on. With the jazz funk, we go to Brazil. This is a reissue done by Mr. Bongo, and Mr. Bongo is doing a lot of reissues from Brazil. And they're all top quality. It's amazing the quality of the records. What I'm most curious about always is with Mr. Bongo, is they really reproduce the album almost exactly as the original. And That got me a little bit scary, what will happen in 10 years? How can you recognize a reissue from Mr. Bongo and the real one? So I did some comparison. 
But I believe Mr. Bongo is always mentioned here on Spine. It says always Mr. Bongo. Because the, the rest of the artwork is just exactly... I mean, there's for example no barcodes or anything on these records. How does that look? Beautiful. The Hype Sticker says one of the finest Brazilian death funk fusion albums ever recorded. I'm going not to twist on this. But I can play a lot of jazz funk albums which are, well, then everybody always wants to say what is the best, what is the top three, what is the best one. You cannot say that. It is just, if it's quality, it's quality. And it sounds good, it sounds good. Eh? No need to, to always make some list of the top three, top five. Just buy all the quality records and then everybody's happy. Next we move to a new release. I think this is also 2019 or 2018. I think 18 actually. Does not say on the cover, Maisha. Make a little bit of room. And this is typical uh, UK jazz at the moment, and it is really hard to keep up. But it's so much quality, like I said before. What is the best UK jazz then? Which should you pick? It's impossible to pick the best one. They're all so high quality. And Maisha, never heard of it. I'm not really aware of the players. It's a gatefold, maybe the inside gives a clue. Well, this is the, the way it is recorded and I mean this says everything. Really beautiful looking. It's on uh, Brownswood, so that's always a stamp for quality. And it's surprisingly how often I've played this one. Um, when I first got it, I thought, Mwah, nice. But the more you play it, there is very, very nice groove to the, uh, to the album, to the music. It's a little bit different as the other UK jazz records. A little bit less beat and also a little bit less free. It's quite structured, the songs. But in that way, it's very nice. Next album is a crazy album. Um, it's from an, from Holland. I don't really know the guy. He calls himself Art Freak. One of the things he should ch definitely change is the front cover. Although maybe that's where you're lucky because I'm sure you're going to find this one in the cheap bins because no one is going to buy a cover that looks like this. And the music, on the other hand, is also crazy. Um, really crazy. <laughs> it's a little bit, uh, a lot funky, uh, a lot of art, a uh, lot of guitar, and this is the back side. And it's like small pieces of music all put together. But if you look on the inside of the gatefold, this is how the front should have looked. This really well presents the album. Because it's picking everywhere. A lot of Brazil, a lot of disco, uh, club music, just being outside, flamingos. It's such a catchy album. Um, but I don't know why he did the front like this. It's that was me. But if you like this kind of music, it's a little bit like like disco, like Freak Le Chic. Maybe that's where the Freak comes from. But for summer music, you cannot beat this. 
There's also some Dutch guy, Roald Snijders. He's a jazz punk musician from the late 70s, begin 80s. He's featured on this one. But also Ed Motta is on here from Brazil. So it's really strange how this album has been created, produced. Difficult to follow it up. But I got this reissue. And I must say, this is the, a good thing, but I don't know if it's really recent. I think this reissue is not that uh, recent from Sabi Martinez. But this is how I feel reissues should be. They are cheap, so they're between 10 and 15 euro. Um, so they're not expensive, they let you introduce you to the music easy, they get you introduced in vinyl easy, and it's a classic album, they could have asked double the price, they didn't. Um, I really hope and wish that record companies release music from the 60s, 70s, maybe even the 80s. Do it at a reduced price, something between 10 and 15 euro or dollar. That way, I think you attract a lot of new people to old music and they don't go always for the standard choices. But they also experiment a little bit and try to find new music. And it doesn't have to be expensive, that is something that is proven with this record. Trying to find the label who did it, it's not there. Um, I hope it's not a bootleg, um, if it is then we can just delete the last two minutes. And I bought the, the record for the same reason, just to, you heard about it, you know originals are crazy expensive, so you want to know what's the hype about, what is the fun part about this record. And in part, I have not really discovered it. I like it, but why it is so expensive and so unique? Maybe I should listen again to it. But it mixes a lot of different styles, by the way. You, you get, uh, like you hear, a little bit of free jazz, a little bit of Latin, uh, a little bit of... It's not really maybe that funky or groovy, maybe that's what's something that I'm missing or was expecting. But if you see this album, it's really nice to get the reissue. The last album is by Essen. You see, it comes out nice. I don't know what the front is, by the way. I think this is the front. Essen is from uh, Turkey, so it's. Um, Antolian Rock. So it has that perfect, just perfect late, well, half 70, 75, probably 77, first guitar in there. It mixes the, the rock influences, the funk influences of the time. Nobody could escape it, I guess. But Essen really introduced, I think this is a debut album. David Chalmia originally released in 1977 with some of his best mid-70s singles. If you like this Eastern music or the Eastern influences, this is really nice album. It really, I'm really going in that direction. I, I really like the sound it gives. And it really, the way they incorporate the rock sound and the first guitars really make this a very, very nice album. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Fresh Jazzy Sounds. Thank you for watching. See you next time.